Hey guys, and welcome to another Xcode tutorial. In this video, we're going to learn how to make a web browser, which is this one right here that we made. And when you open up this web browser, it will take you to this page, which is known as, you know what, Google. And again, you can do a Google search for iOS, and you can search iOS. They'll give you some iOS stuff. You can also enter URLs like Google or mail.google.com. And then it'll take you to like, you can log in. And then you can actually go here, but you can't do this because you need a Gmail, you need an email app. So I guess you can't, a lot of this stuff, you have to get apps instead of using a web browser. But again, web browsers are very convenient. So let's get started. I'm gonna open up Xcode. And then, hopefully, we can create a new Xcode project. It's going to be single view application. I'm going to call it Web Browser Tutorial. And then, it's going to be Swift and iPhone. And I'll oh, I'm going to save it where I did with my original web browser files in my Xcode folder. So, let's go to info.plist. And we're... We're going to add another item in Wolf's work. Please add a new item. There you go. So app transport security settings is what we need. That's a dic that will turn into a dictionary automatically. And we're going to do allow arbitrary loads. And that is yes. Which means no, if there's no HTTPS, they can still load. But if you didn't have that HTTP with an HTTP, not without without an F, you couldn't do that. Do it. And with HTTPS, it still wouldn't work. So we're gonna use that. To, we can just take a text field and put it really wide. And the placeholder will be enter. URL here and then we're gonna put in a button which is right there and the button will say search and then we can go ahead and we're gonna look for a web view And so you can just drag that down, make it as big as you want, and then we're going to open the assistant editor, close off the document outline, outline I meant, and then close off these two tabs so that we can have more space. So we're going to create an outlet for the URL text field, so we're going to call this URL and then we're going to create a web view so web view and then search is an action so we're going to call it search and i spelled that a little wrong but that's okay and then we are going to go to view to load and to make it load google we're going to do web view dot load request and we're going to do this all in one line so ns url request and then url and then ns url i know doing it in one line is very complicated but it saves a lot of time 
is I, what I like. So you do nsurl string, and then we're gonna do http google.com, and then we're gonna go search, and we're gonna say web view. Again, we're gonna do this in one line. Instead, I'm gonna take this and copy it. So the URL instead will just be HTTP plus URL dot text and then plus a slash. And if URL dot text equals none then we are going to load up google just like that i'm just i just decide to add that if you don't want to it's okay because if there's nothing in the text field and you just press search it's not going to do anything but i want it to do something so we're going to go ahead and you can run which right there and does it load and yes it loads please and we're gonna add some constraints as usual oh no I don't want to do that okay my docs my doc and then just add missing constraints and run again that way we can see the search button actually so there you go google i'm going to go to amazon amazon.com search and it takes us to amazon this time i'm gonna leave it blank and hit search and it does take us back to google so this is a success github And then search, and as you, it, as you see, it works. So this is a very convenient web browser. And if you want to make it better, you would add a back button, a reload button, a forward button, and a lot of other buttons. You would also make it auto-enable the return key. So if you press enter, it would automatically search for you. You could also add a uh, activity indicator, which means if something is going, like when it's loading the web view and it doesn't know when it's going to start stop, then you're going to use an activity indicator to start spinning when it's loading and stop spinning when it's not loading. So, guys, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Be sure to try to add some other features as I'm going to try to. So, bye, and I'll post the source code for you.